Hello everyone, it's me, again, and today our list is going to be about the most beautiful female Sonic characters. Um, no, not that, but we are doing the top 100 things you didn't know about Sonic. And when I say that, I mean his universe, obviously, because who wants to know 100 things about wh whatever. Um, just a few pointers before we start. I'm not doing any of the portable games mostly and nothing like Sonic Shuffle or anything like that. Mostly we're gonna stick to the main series. So without too much of a delay, let's begin. When hooking up Sonic 1 to Sonic and Knuckles, the screen will repeatedly say no way. If you press A, B, and C all at the same time, then you're capable of playing with an unlimited amount of Blue Sphere bonus stages. According to programmer Yuji Naka, Sonic's nickname for Eggman is not only meant to be insulting to him, but also somehow affectionate? Yeah, I don't get it either. One reason Sonic can't swim is because some of the programmers mistakenly believed that hedgehogs could not swim. The soundtrack for this game, and the second game, were both composed by Masato Nakamura, who is famous in Japan for being the bass player in Dreams Come True. There was going to be a sound test feature in the game, with Sonic appearing as the lead singer in a rock band, featured by many scrapped characters, one being Vector the Crocodile. To begin with, Sonic was actually based on object interaction, along with having the speed gimmick, something that didn't get brought back until Sonic Adventure, but even then, it was pretty minimal at that. Flicky the Bluebird, who here appears as one of Sonic's imprisoned friends, was originally the star of her own game, and predates Sonic. Remember that game with the birds and cats? The game puts you in control of the bird, desperate to save her chicks from hungry cats. And after that, she was imprisoned in a machine in Green Hill Zone. That's life. It was never explained, but for some reason, the Spring Yard Zone was originally going to be called the Sparkling Zone. The game was featured in the Nickelodeon game show Nick Arcade. If a team gets a video challenge, they had an option of playing the beta version of Sonic the Hedgehog with some weird sphere at the beginning that I've never seen before that tries to squash you. Very odd, and many collectors seek out this beta. He's got 20 rings already. There was a feature where pressing jump after a stage would allow Sonic to leap into the air and pump his fist, but this was later implemented at the very end of the game in a completely scripted happening. Still, you gotta admit, it, it does look pretty badass. A competition was held in order to come up with a sidekick character for Sonic in his sequel. Yasushi Yamagachi's young two-tailed fox was the winner, but he wanted the character to be called Miles and was turned down. The character ended up as Tails, but Yamaguchi managed to sneak the name Miles into much of the background art for the game. The game's ending theme is based upon an actual song by Dreams Come True, titled Sweet Sweet Sweet. It was originally released on the album The Swinging Star, which was released just a few days before the game. It's a great song, and I actually like it more than the in-game version. That song that you just heard a few seconds ago is the Sonic 2 ending, which is based on this song. Of the many omitted levels in Sonic 2, Hidden Power Zone was the only one to be brought back years later on handheld devices and hasn't had a console release. A Japanese preview for the game showed several shots of this level, which never got a release on the original cartridge, but it shares names with level featured in Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Emerald Hill was the name for a town just south of San Francisco where the game was being developed. Time travel was actually supposed to be a mechanic used in Sonic 2, but instead was used for the Sega CD game that was actually being worked on at the exact same time, Sonic CD. The level select sheet, which can be accessed through the sound test, is 1965-917, a date, which is Yuji Naka's birthday. With 6 levels and 12 enemies removed from the game, one of which was a T-Rex badnik, we can only assume that the game was almost as rushed as Halo 2. There's evidence that the Super Sonic transformation really is based on the Super Saiyan transformation from Dragon Ball Z. Not only did the idea of a yellow, nearly invincible hulk of a person 
debut a year before Sonic 2's release, but one of the creators admitted to being a fan. There's a new cutscene at the end of the Sonic 2 iOS port, featuring Robotnik surviving the crash and a shadowed figure in a bush. Hmm. I wonder who that could be. Sega actually did hire Michael Jackson for the music on the game, but dropped him over the infamous allegations of child molestation. His songwriting team carried on without him, and it is believed part of what he wrote stayed in the game. Sonic 3 was originally supposed to have Sonic and Knuckles combined onto it, but once again, time constraints forced the team to cut their losses and make a new, great sequel instead. Originally, the game was going to be designed with an isometric viewpoint, sort of like the special stages from the past games. It would later appear in Sonic 3D Blast and the cancelled Sonic Extreme. Hidden Power Zone derives from the underground cavern near Mount Araki in central Japan. It too is filled with stones as well as ancient rock formations. Using the debug mode in Hidden Palace Zone, it is possible to hit Robotnik 256 times and he will explode, turning into a blue flicky. Interestingly enough, there isn't any water in Sonic & Knuckles unless you link the game onto the original Sonic 3 instead. It's odd that the four Sonic games would use lock-on technology because the only thing before they used it was the Game Genie, a device that manipulated the code in the games, a sort of super cheating device. Fifteen years later, Lady Gaga released her song Bad Romance, which, like it or not, fits almost perfectly to the track Flying Battery from Sonic and Knuckles. Masato Nakamura, the guy who made the first two soundtracks, wanted to be paid more to compose the third, so Sega parted with him. Just think, had they not done that, we might not have our weird mashup. Blue Sphere, the Sonic 3 and Knuckles minigame, has 134,217,728 levels, some of which, oddly enough, begin to repeat themselves at a certain point. Level 23,411,487 has 672 spheres that you have to collect. Fans dubbed a weird removed character that looks like a negative Knuckles, Wecknia, who in game was actually just called Blank. He appears as a glitched white Knuckles. Research on the game's prototypes eventually revealed the data was actually a placeholder for Tails. One beta screenshot of Knuckles Chaotix implied that Espio was supposed to be the main character instead of Knuckles. One of the original names for the game was Knuckles Ringstar. Knuckles Chaotix is actually the product of what was originally Sonic Crackers, a prototype that was only similar in having Sonic and Tails being tethered together. The song that's playing right now is an unused piece of music composed for the game for Battles with Dr. Eggman. It was later recycled for Sonic the Hedgehog 4, Episode 1. This game was set to be a safety net for the Saturn in case of Sonic Extreme failing to pass the production stages. Obviously, it did. While Sonic R is usually considered, statistically, to be one of the worst Sonic games to date, it has a large following of people who actually do love it. One of the biggest circulating things about the game is the Tails Doll Curse, a campy creepypasta about one of the in-game characters being cursed. A result of one of the worst porting jobs ever, some PC versions of this game do not have audio. The secondary theme for Windy Valley, the one that plays after you get out of the tornado, is a remix of Green Grove Zone from Sonic 3D Blast. The opening theme to Twinkle Park is a remix of the original theme from Sonic 3D Blast.
Knuckles was originally supposed to have an uppercut move, but it was removed for unknown reasons, probably because it wouldn't have been too useful. On mission 12 of Sonic Adventure DX HD as Knuckles, you can find several posters from Sonic X, Sonic Unleashed, and Sonic 4. During Sky Chase Act 2, Tails pilots the Tornado 2 for the first time. The life bar, however, still shows the Tornado 1 life bar. What's odd about this is that you can find the Tornado 2 life bar in the game's files, but it goes unused. A leftover title screen from the Tokyo Game Show beta version of the game still exists within the game's code. Some objects were removed from the game's original release, but were later discovered in a PC version, one of which being a simple tumbleweed. Six images can be found within the game's data that appear to be a part of an old character select screen. An unused clock item can be found in the game's files. It's possible that it may have functioned the same way as Chaos Control, or was a way of adding time to E-102 Gamma's levels. Sonic Extreme, an unfinished Sonic game, was to be released for the Sega Saturn in 1996. Extreme was originally going to be the first fully 3D Sonic game to come out. Instead, Sonic Adventure took the lead on that, and it was for the Dreamcast instead. Many of the textures used in the game were actually photos taken by Sonic Team on their trip to Central America, mainly used in the Mystic Ruins area. Big the Cat's fishing style gameplay was created when Sega wanted a way to promote a fishing peripheral from the Dreamcast. It didn't work, to say the least. At the Sonic Adventure Conference in 1998, one of the pictures shown was a screenshot from the first Sky Chase, which showed a dragon attacking the tornado. This dragon never made it into Sky Chase, but it's still in the game's files. Tikal, the name of the Echidna Princess, is the name of an actual ancient Mayan city. There's an unused spring model that can be found in the game's files. It shares similarity to the springs used in Sonic Jam's Sonic World. There are also a few unused Chow emoticons that include a picture of a cloud, a teardrop, and a star. Several unused to call voice clips were found in the game's files, including her mentioning how to turn into Super Sonic, referencing that Super Sonic was supposed to be usable in adventure levels. Gather 50 rings and press the action button while you jump. You'll transform into Super Sonic, but watch out for your ring consumption. There are several removed levels with names such as Jungle, Desert, and Mushroom, two of which were indirectly used in Sonic Adventure 2. Composers in the Sonic series have been sampling from other songs for a long time. The famous Up and Down and All Around actually comes from a James Brown song. To celebrate the release of Sonic Adventure, Yuji Naka joined a line of fans in Tokyo's Akihabara district waiting to purchase the game, standing to four life-size representations. Windy Valley has definitely gone through the most changes during the game's development. Tails and Big can be seen standing in an early prototype of the stage. Big isn't even able to access that place. For whatever reason, the hidden black chow egg found within the egg carrier is blue and black with pink spots on the Dreamcast, but black in literally every other port of the game. The Dreamcast disc has a PC-readable folder named Extras that contains nine different wallpapers based on the playable characters. These pictures went unused until Sonic Mega Collection. In the Dreamcast version of Sonic Adventure, you can explore under the deep water of the Egg Carrier Chow Garden, and under there lies one secret ring. It does nothing. Knuckles' own theme song says that he's a porcupine for some reason. The same person who voiced Parappa the Rappa is the one who made Knuckles' adventure theme song. The two songs that were remade in Windy Valley and Twinkle Park Act 1 were both composed by John Senuo, someone who felt they should have been used in a more prominent title. Some of the textures used for E-105 are actually pictures of Dreamcasts. Cream the Rabbit has several cameos in Sonic Adventure DX, the first of which is during Sonic's story. Sonic Adventure is one of the first console games to feature digital downloadable content, and luckily most of it was pretty much free. 
DLC could be something really simple, or it could be something huge like the Chow Black Market, which was actually added in. John St. John, yep, the guy who voiced Duke Nukem, voiced Big the Cat. One of the only reasons Big the Cat made it into the next few games is because he's surprisingly well liked in Japan. John St. John apparently hates Big the Cat as much as everybody else. After he was dropped from the role, he deliberately forgot how to do the voice. Yuji Naka once said in an interview that Sonic Adventure was supposed to be a Saturn game, but the idea was scrapped when they decided to focus on the Dreamcast. Perfect Chaos looking the way he is in Sonic Adventure 1 was a result of graphical limitations. This is how they actually originally wanted him to look, much darker. Like I said earlier, Sonic Team used a lot of the Mystic Ruins textures from their trip to Central America. Sand Dune is an area in Peru that the textures were almost entirely inspired from. Sega made a deal with Soap Shoes to use a modified version of one of their shoes as the official footwear of Sonic the Hedgehog. You can actually catch a glimpse of his old shoes at the very beginning of the Dreamcast version. When one collects all 180 emblems and achieves A ranks in all missions, they're treated to a 3D rendition of Green Hill Zone from Sonic the Hedgehog. This was part of a bigger project that ended up being Sonic Generations nearly 10 years later. In the Dreamcast version of Sonic Adventure 2, the City Escape playing Sonic Adventure 2's habit forming poster had a message that read Anti Sony PS2 Association. The message was removed in the GameCube version. In Final Chase, its song, Supernatural, has a lyric that says, Nothing's unpredictable to me, nothing can surprise me. In the cutscene following this level, Shadow says, You never cease to surprise me. Connor Bringus took over the role of Tails from his older brother, Corey, after he got too old and his voice changed too much to continue playing the character. Originally, there were only going to be three playable characters, Sonic, Knuckles, and Eggman. However, at E3, people were so disappointed by this in comparison to Sonic Adventure that they changed it up a bit. The claymation-looking president's secretary said the moon was destroyed three hours ago. The incident occurred at 6 p.m., and at the time she said it's now past 8 a.m., and it's also daytime outside. Any normal person knows that 6 p.m. and 9 a.m. are not three hours apart. Also, it seems the moon's effect of well, blowing up didn't really have an effect on the tides or anything like that, and it didn't appear as blown up in Sonic Unleashed, when in reality it would be, you know, kind of a serious issue. Also, Eggman has a planet-destroying fetish, because he blows up the Earth, too, not even ten years later. In all seriousness, though, Shadow was clearly designed to be in only one game, being killed off at the end of Sonic Adventure 2. However, he appears in a few more games afterwards, and even gets his own self-titled game due to fan demand. In the promos, there was clearly a good or evil concept that ended up being erased. As in, it doesn't matter how much you play, you always get the same ending. The concept for the story was going to have the ability to influence the outcome of the story based on who you play as and which side you chose. And that's why the good versus evil concept was hyped up so much before the initial release, but never really ended up being used. Hated so badly in Sonic Adventure 1, Big the Cat did not make a return as a playable character in the sequel, and is only featured through minor cameos similar to Cream the Rabbit's cameos from earlier. By rotating the analog stick for a few moments in the theme select screen of the options menu, a chime will eventually play, then a picture of the president's secretary will appear, allowing it to be selected as a menu theme. Oh yeah! Several of the characters' lines will cut each other off, or their mouth will move for way too long. This is due to the length of the lines being longer in English than in Japanese, or vice versa. There are leftover models and textures for a Chow playground and a Chow library within the game, supposedly making reaching higher stats easier. 
The game's art director revealed that the idea for the Mono Beetles, those stupid flying things that are stationary with lock-on bullets, came from a San Francisco parking attendant's vehicle. There is a variety of unused data in the game codes. It includes art assets, extra tutorials, and added Chow World DLC like I said earlier. Team Chaotix Team Blast is so loud that you can't even hear what they're singing because of the sound effects and enemy explosions. By holding A and Y after choosing a team in two player mode, the teams chosen will be in their metal states. And they look pretty damn menacing. In the original teaser trailer for the game, Sonic was shown to be able to transform into Super Sonic at will, and not just during a boss fight. This was a feature that couldn't be done in previous 3D Sonic games, and was cut during development due to extreme time constraints, unfortunately. Although Knuckles is normally unable to complete any of the levels, it's possible to complete Flamecore with him by using glitches. He has a fully functional level completion animation and rank specific voiceovers, which shows he may have had a larger role at some point. In Shadow Story, after you ignite the flames around the fountain in Soliana City, you receive a message from Gun HQ. The message contains two takes, the first takes actually being messed up and kept in the game. In Sonic 06's manual, there's a section about shields, however they cannot be accessed during normal gameplay. By modifying the game's code, or using some sort of modded save, they can be accessed, but don't protect against damage. The game was more rushed than Sonic 2 or 3, but for the wrong reasons, mainly for a Christmas release to mark it as the 15th anniversary of Sonic. Yeah, totally worth it, right guys? Early trailers and demonstration videos promised things like a day-night system, mini-games, and a free mode that allowed you to play as any character without storyline constraints. And this is what we got. There were plans to create a Wii port of this game, but time constraints had them make Sonic and the Secret Rings instead. And number 100, without a doubt, the most profound of all Sonic games that I've ever seen is... Sonic Boom is not only the worst selling title in the history of the franchise with the worst soundtrack, but it's the only Sonic game to have a higher rated TV show than the game itself. In fact, if you look up Sonic Boom on YouTube, you'll find the episodes before the actual game itself. If you want to know what it's like, I'll give you a small preview right here. Look at the size of Lyric's ship! The only good thing about more enemies is I get to destroy more enemies. Lyric's goons, they're attacking! So, with a rather depressing ending, that was the top 100 things you may not have known about Sonic. Now, I know I missed a ton, so be sure to share more with me, as this probably would be a top 200 list if I put games on there that I didn't put on there, like Unleashed, or maybe even the TV show Sonic X, or Sonic Underground, or even the comics. Who knows? But anyway, I hope I entertained you for the last 20 minutes, and here's to the next Sonic game not being full of... Um... Bad. By the way, Sega, if you really want to make money, start working on Generations 2. We'll all start throwing money at you immediately. Okay? Do it. There you have it, folks! Those were the hottest female chicks in the Sonic universe. I hope you enjoyed it, happy Valentine's Day, and I'll see you later. Here we go!